Hello and welcome. My name is Miro. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to have sort of a chill video or we aspire to have a chill video. There are no promises <laughs> that it's going to be super chill. But essentially what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to plan out my planned chores and in general to look at all the things that I need to do in the month of June. I made only one of these videos in the past. I think it was potentially in March, I don't know. And I think I said at the beginning of April that I really enjoyed making that video and I think a lot of the people, like the feedback was very positive. So I sort of promised to do one in April as well, but I didn't do it. Shocking, right? Miro says he's gonna do something and he doesn't. Hello, Hoya Tor part four. It's not going to happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> there is no petition you can sign for that to happen. I do apologize. We're just gonna have to make a whole new planned tour for the year of 2024. Is that the year that we're in? I think it is. Anyway, and for the month of May, I sort of did the same thing where I planned out my chores, but it was more of a private thing and I didn't share it on YouTube, but I was actually pretty much sticking to what I wanted to do for the month of May. There are some things that I didn't achieve, which is fine. I, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure even now, like we're going to plan out my June as if June has... 40 days instead of 30 but that's you know you gotta plan if someone decides to switch up the months and like hey now june has 40 days or you know suddenly you are 10 times faster or you have a clone anyway i'm gonna probably plan out a bit more as usual but that's okay i actually don't feel bad i think for the first time in may i didn't feel bad because realistically i did just so many things i sprayed both of my why does my tent have a belly probably means something fell i'm sorry i'm getting distracted by everything i did a lot of things in may i sprayed almost all of my hoyas with paraffin oil and some equivalent to castile soap for mealybugs and I do have to tell you, I don't think I'm going to be doing this again. I need to find an alternative because even though I used a very low solution of paraffin oil, I'm just getting issues with my Hoyas, with some of them, not with all of them, but I just find it to be very unreliable. So I need to find a different solution. I only used, you can use one to 2% solution and I use like 0.1%. I put like, I think two or three millimeters per two liters. That's nothing. I don't know why that happened, but I'm getting some leaf drop on some of my Hoyas and I, you know, I follow the temperatures. I didn't expose them to light after the spraying, but I don't know what's happening. My Erythrina is looking pretty bad. She was supposed to go, she was supposed to be featured in Hoya of the Week and I did film a video, but I was not really happy with my enthusiasm in that video because I think I filmed like four videos that day or five and that was one of the last ones and I just don't look very enthusiastic, but she looks really good in that video, and I think we're essentially not going to feature her in the series until she looks good again, and it's going to take a while because she lost over half of the leaves, and I'm going to cut her and restart her, but I'm sort of waiting for her to calm down. But I just noticed now on my Suzy Q, she has also lost some leaves, especially those that have more variegation. I have lost three or four, and it's not a huge plant. So I'm not loving what is happening and I will talk a little bit about about the treatment because I am going to restart some plants in this video that actually suffered due to oil treatment. So we're going to look into that. But anyways, I'm going to plan out my... Oh, we have a Hoya in bloom. Don't know why is it blooming now. This one is also supposed to be part of the series, but I'm going to chop her. I don't know why she's open now. She's not supposed to open now, but Affinity Lambi. Hmm. Can we focus, please? It's not supposed to open now. This plant, I don't like what she is doing. I think I'm going to get rid of this particular clone because I have a other one that's more splashy. I'm going to fix this. It's looking horrible, I know. I already cut parts of it, but I'm gonna chop off even more. I don't know, the roots are in good condition. She has been treated for mites, but for whatever reason, this particular clone hasn't been the best grower. And it's not supposed to not be a good grower because they do have, a, again, a splashy one, which I also recorded a video on this. And I also don't look enthusiastic, so I don't think you're gonna see it anytime soon, but 
I have a splashy clone of this and it's growing fantastically, much better than this one ever grew, so. Anyway, all of that aside, we are going to restart some plants in this section of the video. This is sort of going to be like a vlog, day and a half, two day vlog, I think, where I'm going to start doing some chores, but I'm also going to kind of walk around my collection and write down what I see that needs to be done. So I will look into my tents and sort of make a list of what I want to repot, what I want to trellis. I don't think I need to restart anything else. I have about quick count, I can't count quickly, 10 Hoyas here, maybe less, that need to be restarted, that I want to restart because I don't like the aesthetics of what they look like. And then uh, I think the rest is just gonna be repotting and re-trellising the, the ones that we have. I'm going to put out a trellising video for next week, so stay tuned for that. And it's not going to be like the one that I did in my Hoya summer camp. I'm actually going to re-trellis some Hoyas, extend some trellises, etc. And we're just gonna talk all about Hoya trellising. So coming soon to a YouTube channel near you, whatever. <laughs> So let's just begin with this portion of the video. I have my scissors ready. We have my Hoya Pia Stolepis. I, I can't, I cannot, I cannot stand the way that this looks. We're gonna restart her. I don't like the look. I'm just gonna check. I don't see any peduncles. Uh, if I do see some, I might seize the chop. But yeah, I don't like the way that this has grown, obviously. I did cut it recently. So we're just gonna take a look here. I essentially would like to have a plant that grows better than she currently is growing. She sometimes drops leaves for me, which I'm not a fan of. So we do have some good vines, actually. It's really more towards the bottom and some messy trellising here for the love of Miro. This also looked better than it's currently looking. I did already untrellis her to sort of take a cutting for a friend and I just threw it back on the trellis, not even caring because I knew I was going to restart her. And if it weren't for the bare vines on the bottom, I would probably just repot this. I'm trying to get her out of the pond. As you know, I'm leaving pond. See, it's not that bad. I feel it's not that bad, but we do have some um, nudes <laughs> here. We should just call the bare vines the nudes. We just have some nudes here and I don't want to be seeing them. This is such a pretty vine though. See, I want this, this section here is uh, hot as heck. They're hot as heck. I want this everywhere. I'm actually going to try something here, and that is to root a large vine. Or maybe I want to make a full pot. Oh, this always happens. I'm like, do I want to make a full pot or do I want to have a larger vine? I'm just going to take, this is gonna be one cutting. Oh, so pretty. And I'm just gonna essentially toss them here into one of the boxes. What do I wanna do? This is a different vine, which honestly ugly towards the bottom. So let's just chop here. I'm gonna cut it here. This is a sexy pair of leaves. So we keep the sexiness. And then this, this is not too bad. This one, don't love this, um, but I think we can just make this into a plant at one point. So that's gonna go in my ugly pile. This is okay. I will cut it here though, cause yeah, don't ask questions. Let's see what else we have. We have another pretty darn hot looking piece of leaf. So let's cut that. I don't know, do I, maybe I'll make two pots of this plant. Oh, I'm getting sap all over myself, interesting. Ugly pile, we're gonna grow that out. Now let's look at this. This is what we are left with, and 
I don't know. Maybe I can... But, you know, these leaves are yellow, so those are gonna fall... They're gonna fall off. Should I or should I not chop this into several vines? Let's try to root this as one vine. Mm. If I root it here, let's see. Let's think about this. Let's just cut it here. And then I will think how I want to pot this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. We need a different prop box. I think I'm gonna keep only one for myself. Because I already have another piesto lapis. Okay, we have some pretty leaves here. So let's cut that. Two more nice cuttings. This goes in the ugly pile. Let's see. Ugly, sort of pretty and ugly. So. <laughs> I am a savage when it comes to this. And then, <laughs> okay, you know what? <sighs> okay, you know what? Let's attempt to keep the base. I am going to get rid of the pawn from it. Let's sort of try this. I think we do need to cut up these roots. Savage, absolute savage. All right, the root system doesn't look that bad, but I don't know, this plant doesn't seem to me that she loved the pond. I haven't been getting consistent leaves, but the roots are fine. There's actually not much rot, if any, even. Um, I'm sure they're gonna be absolutely horrible after this, but it is what it is. I'm going to put this in organic mix and see what we can get from this base and keep you updated. I also have very limited time for this section of the video. My niece is coming for an English class, which I know no one cares about, but I have to be very quick here, so no time to really take it slowly. Um, F you. I forgot the name of this Hoya, but it's a Hoya that has rotten several times on me and it has rotted again. And I keep putting her in pawn, even though she has made it very clear that she hates it. Yet I don't listen. So look at that. Multiple times it rotted. So Absolutely not. We're not going to do this in pawn anymore. I'm going to make three cuttings from this one. I will write the name. I'm sorry that I don't know it now. Um, that was very violent. <laughs> I just realized that. There is no sap coming, which is excellent sign. This has been dry for a moment. But I do think... Oh, okay. Here it is. Sometimes it can take a moment if the Hoya is dehydrated. It can take a moment for the sap to show up, so just give her a moment. It's a very pretty Hoya, but, and I think it's species SR-2009005, something like that. I'm really just trying to pull this out of my head, but let's just trim these dry tips. Yeah, I haven't really enjoyed growing this been a struggle with her. Okay, so that's two Hoyas out of the way. I do have one that is going to be pretty difficult, but we're going to go back to that. My Archbaldiana out of variegated. We're moving quickly. We're moving quickly. If you have anxiety, I'm sorry. <laughs> My Archbaldiana, I don't think she liked Pawn. So we're just going to dump it and move her to organic mix. Those are the roots. Not impressed. I'm not impressed with the roots. I believe that my Archbaldiana that I just got from Sweden, a new one, essentially from the same other plant, has better roots than this. So we're gonna put this in organic mix for now, and then I will think about if I'm going to chop this, if I see that she's stable. And I'm gonna see how the other one grows. I mean, maybe the other one is gonna be even worse. So we're just gonna see.
but these are all gonna go into organic mix. I really like this plant. I don't know. I don't like Archboldiana, and I actually like that this is small. But the thing that bothers me is I'm, I know it's not supposed to look like this. So that's my struggle here. You're not gonna love this one. This is a pretty nice Nong Nooch. I did burn it here and then I broke the leaf. So I do apologize, but some of them are pretty hot. I should probably stop saying that these hoas are hot, but they really are. Some of them really are sexy. And hasn't been the best grower for me either. Should be an easy Hoya. Don't know why she doesn't like me, but she doesn't. I did cut her several times though. But yeah, I think right now we are going to make several cuttings. This one, it's gonna be one, even though this stem, I honestly don't trust it. But yeah, let's do it here. The stem is very thin for such a big leafed Hoya. This as a second one. Pretty nice cuttings. Maybe I will decide to keep it, I don't know. It does have a peduncle here, but for the sake of my mental health, I will cut that off. Because we know that is going to annoy me. We know how Miro is. I don't deserve some of these plants because I can't stand the way they grow. I completely agree with you. That's pretty. This is also pretty. I guess the plan for June is to go from having few Hoya cuttings rooted to having a million. Let's dump this out. Oh, she's not growing because the roots are rotten. Okay. Does make sense. It does make sense. She did not love pawn at all. She had much, much, much bigger root system. So don't blame you. Don't blame you. Let's clean that off. That's not a great root system at all. So I'm just probably going to chop most of it off and start with a short stem, which is risky, but there's just no use in recovering a root system that's so bad. Let's see how much of the stem we can save. No sap. That doesn't really look healthy to me. Let's try it here. There is sap. But can you see how weird that is? I don't know. Sometimes I do like to try with these sort of ugly cuttings. I'm gonna put it in the ugly pile, which somehow is also with my beautiful pile. Honestly, maybe it wouldn't be the worst to root this upside down and then it will start growing here. Because this is a good stem. This is good stem. I think I might do that. Because if this grows, it will, it will grow from here. But this is just not a very good piece of the stem. We're kind of lucky. So maybe we do root this upside down. Which again, I don't typically recommend. But for the sake of saving the plant... Because, you know, I just, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would I use this? Because it's so short just to get growth coming here. No, I think I'm just going to do it like this. And it doesn't look super ugly if I do it like this. Let's just pretend. I'm going to root it in a smaller pot, of course, but for example, something like this. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to root it upside down. Oh my gosh, you're going to cancel me. Okay, so who is going to be next? I think I might choose this for Salata. Essentially, I want to get rid of this plant completely. Um, so, of course, the logical step is to make more propagations. <laughs> Do you think I'm joking? I'm not. No, I'm going to trim her a bit. I'm going to trim her a bit to make her a bit more manageable. Oh, you don't even see her. Let's put... Okay, that's better. Now you can see the mess around me, but hey. So this plant here, it's doing well. I also recently untrellised this to gift a cutting, but yeah, let's just 
trim her down to something that I like. There is one leaf here that I particularly find sexy. It's this one. Look at that. My gosh, love it. We're gonna try to untangle her here and then see what I want to do. She has so many branches here. I think I can just cut this entire branch. There is a peduncle down there, which is I find annoying because that's not the place for a peduncle, if you ask me. She would actually maybe make a... No, I was thinking for a moment she would make a nice hanging plant, but then I decided that that's not where I want to take her. I'm not going to keep this one. So let's just cut that all the way to the base. There's a peduncle there. We're gonna cut th these for sale, essentially. Hmm. I don't know, let's cut it. Okay. Okay. So let's attempt some trellising action. I actually wanna check on the roots of this plant. They look okay-ish. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna chop this one completely down and then we're gonna sell it. This doesn't come as a shock. I do need to really stop having millions of Hoyas. Maybe I will make a hanging basket out of it. I don't know. It's not that I don't like this plant. Oh, I actually <laughs> love that. That's kind of cute. This plant is in bloom, but the time is up. I am going to chop this. So that's one cutting here. <laughs> and then I do want to check the roots of this one. There are a lot of dry, dry roots, so. Yeah, there's no sap coming here. What the heck? It doesn't feel rotten, it just feels super dry. So I guess it's good we decided to chop that. I really am not holding back. We are running out of time here. My Vang Viengensis. My Vang Viengensis essentially got a bad case of mites and it lost a lot of the leaves. She has recovered for the most part, I think but we have lost a lot of the bottom leaves. I'm just trying to show you what that looks like. She was nice and full. We still have like a full part here. So I'm gonna keep that. I am not interested in keeping the base whatsoever. Um, so, up. I do like this plant. My leg is dead here. I did mess up this vine a bit, so I'm just gonna cut it. And essentially, I think with this, what we are going to do is go for a full pot of Vang Viengensis for Miro. Well, that vine broke, which is always nice. So I'm just gonna do one node cuttings of that and make a full pot. This next part is gonna piss off a lot of people. It's my Huacari. She looks more awful on camera than she does in real life. But yeah, this is one of the victims of the mite treatment. Root system is okay, but I can't stand her with the leaf drop and she continuously drops these leaves. Essentially all of the leaves dropped from the mite treatment that I did. So what I will do now is I will untangle her and violently, unapologetically, brutally chop her. But it just, my treat, treatment was not something that she enjoyed. First time it was okay, so I thought, great, let's keep doing it, but nope. Then she said, Miro, you can go to a place where bad people go to. This is a nice vine, but that nicety ends here. So let's just, Get that out. So we'll keep that. Pretty nice. I think I will keep that as one single vine. And then the other one, maybe we can start a new plant with these two. 
Let's just get something here going. There we go, that's another one. These leaves also look fine. So that's two huacaris. This is gonna go into the ugly pile. Let's try to rescue that. Where is my ugly pile though? And then the base is going into the tent in attempt to see if we can regrow something out of it. We're gonna leave one node. The roots are fine or were fine. Maybe they're not the best. I don't care. We have one more plant and that's my Hoya Denisi. Also the sufferer of the mite treatment. And my niece is coming in 40 minutes and I made a mess here. Let's be faster than the speed of light. Is that Madonna? All right, this plant used to be nice. You have seen her on Instagram. She was beautiful. My treatment has ravaged her. Mealybugs have ravaged her. She hasn't had a good life. The winter in that window did not suit her. I'm gonna try to save these leaves, but they're very small. The rest of it, I'm chopping into smaller cuttings. Maybe a couple of nodes. We'll see how I feel. I'm just gonna put her in the pot to just keep her isolated and I'm gonna put suspicious Hoyas in a separate prop box, to be quite honest. Probably don't have as many prop boxes, but hey, we'll see. Okay, I think this can be one. No mealies now, but I do see mite damage. She will need to be treated again. I will also leave the base, see what we can get, but I don't suspect good roots at all. They were good, but she just didn't like that winter in that window. It's not her first win winter either, but it just got, I think, too cold and too wet for the roots. So it's unfortunate, but hey, there are more devastating things in life than losing a plant that you like. So I'm not even bothered because she's not completely lost. She just needs to regain her beauty. And we are giving her that opportunity, guys. So that's a stump. Chop here. Trash. I'm gonna get so many comments on this video where people are gonna be so angry, but can't help you. Let's just chop this into bits. I'm probably gonna pot several per, per pot. I don't know, I'll see what I will do. And I think, again, Coco Husk is going to be my medium of choice here. Also, there's no use for me to go with two node cuttings because why would you? Maybe here I can do two nodes and then this is a good candidate, but yeah. Okay, that's it. That's it for this section. I will, let's check those roots. I mean, since we are here, shocking. I'm so shocked that pawn turned into mud. That's all from lava rock that has been rinsed a million times. This is actual mud. Roots all the way to the bottom too. Some growers have warned against this, that over time this is going to happen. I did not believe them. There are new roots here, so I'm going to clean this off. I do have to remember this is Denise, so I'll just put her with Denise. <laughs> Where's Kari stump? Here it is. <laughs> let's see, let's check. That one has better roots. That's actually quite good. Okie dokie. Well, we get to reuse these pots and put these in smaller cups, so that's something. I forgot who this is. This is Affinity Lambi, right? No, it's not. This is not Affinity Lambi. This is Van Viangensis. Can you believe that I identify who is now on over a stump? <laughs> yep, this is Van Viangensis, because I cut Affinity Lambi. Not too bad for the root system, but... Okay, I will come back. This video is far from over, far from over.
Right, this is actually not the most terrible angle. I sort of expected this to look like crap, but it's a passable crap, <laughs> which is how you always want your crap to be. <laughs> okay, I am unwell apparently. So this is the second day of the plant chores slash me planning out the month of June. And essentially what I'm going today is I'm going to write down all the things that need to be done and I find it easier to sort of look at the things for example at my one of my grow tents this is the medium one and just looking inside and figuring out what needs to be done what I want to do and I do see a yellow leaf please abandon us so I'm going to take a look here at my plants see what I want to repot what I want to trellis. And I think what I also will need to do is I'll need to treat them at least one more time. I don't really know what I will use because I'm having more and more and more not so great experience with mineral oil. So I'm not really sure what can be done there. And I just found another mealybug about to be hatched, but I uh, destroyed them on my Carnosa Argentia that is reverting to Nova Ghost constantly. So if she does not start becoming more variegated, I'm gonna let her succumb to those mealybugs. That's a warning. <laughs> I'm not joking. I am actually not joking because I already have so many Nova Ghosts. So I'm gonna start a new sheet here. I would typically do this on my computer, but my computer is now connected to my camera. My uh, display still doesn't work and I can't send the camera in yet for a repair, but Essentially what I'm going to be looking in my grow tent is I will write down a list at plants that are still in pawn and plants that I absolutely think I must repot and some that I may not need to. I'm also going to take a note of what is going to bloom because I need flower photos for a lot of these Hoyas still. A lot of them are not blooming for the first time, but I just didn't do a good job of taking the photos for the first time. So we need to retake those. So I'm just gonna take a look here inside. Oh, you know what? I can show you, I can show you my Hoya Patella. I do want to retrellis this one, but... Oh, how dare you? Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, how dare she? <laughs> Holy Moses. Oh my God. Okay, I'm not gonna touch her. I I want to restart and retrellis her and get like a bushier plant, even though this is like okay bushy, but I want bushy bushy. Look at that, that is a fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. I love this plant so much. Never, ever, ever will I stop growing her patella. Like, my goodness, look at her, look at her. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to stop. Like, you absolutely cannot convince me this is not one of the best Hoyas. If you don't have Hoya Patella, you need Hoya Patella. I don't care what your opinions on Hoya are. This flower is a bit squished by the vine, so someone could have done a better job here. Trellising, but my goodness. I don't know, do I risk repotting this from Pong? No. Yeah, see, these are situations in which I don't think I can do anything here. I might start another plant, though. I might take a cutting and start another plant of Hoya Patella. I wouldn't mind having two. I don't know. It grows also quite fast, but, you know, this one lost leaves along the way. It has been underwatered many times. I don't know. Maybe I just need to also, like, extend the trellis on this one. Even though there is, like, one more ring here. Uh, yeah, we can't really just do much. Maybe I will retrellis her. I don't know. But gorgeous. So I'm not going to do anything with Hoya Patella this month, though. It's just not a priority. So we are going to just say thank you very much for your service and put her back. I do need to repot and retrellis. See, I'm losing leaves on this one. I just made a video Hoya of the week for this. I'm losing leaves. 
and that happened all after my oil treatment. So I'm not quite happy about that, but anyway, this Fang Viengiensis needs a slightly larger pot and girl is stuck. I need to trellis this a little bit better. This is the big leaf clone. I just restarted the NS clone that I have. This is supposed to have big leaves. I don't know, they're mid, mid, medium size, but very, very pretty. So I do need to do something with this plant. It's just not the best trellising situation, is it? Also, she's very dry. So stay on top of watering is one of the tasks. There are some plants though that absolutely I need to repot from ponds. So I'm going to write that down. So medium tent, let's start. I think what I will do is I will make several categories. So to repot and then flower watch, I guess. Okay, I think it's time to get on all fours and just see what flowers I need to watch out for. And I'm going to just write down those that I need to take better photos of or more detailed photos. So for example, I see my Hoya Honey uh, purple is about to flower. Let me show you that plant. Hoya Honey, which for whatever reason always makes these awful leaves for me. I, t I hate her for the leaves, I really do. And I wanted to get rid of her. I just don't know if Hanye does this for everyone. My friend Carolina told me that her Hanye also is kind of like this or used to be. She doesn't grow it anymore because of that reason. I don't think this is like anything in relation to watering. It's just how she is. She doesn't need a repot. The roots look reasonably healthy. I'm not going to actually repot her, but I might extend the trellis. I will think about that, but we do have a nice set of buds and I'm definitely going to keep this one. I went back and forth and I kind of hated her there, but honestly, I think she, she just blooms pretty frequently. I really like the flowers, so I'm going to keep her. I'm going to have to find a way to get over the leaf look. I know that some people have this and it doesn't look like this. Like obviously some of this is due to highlight, but even that doesn't look very nicely sun stressed to me. It kind of like shows up in these um, circular patches to a point where it makes me look, think or worry that she is sick, but I don't know, I don't think she is. But I just think that's how Hanya is. I will have to talk to some people about that. Would we focus? Not the prettiest leaves, but I'm, I need a detailed photo of that one. I do want to check on some verticillatas down here, so maybe I can bring you with me. For whatever reason, the light seems decent-ish. Oh, and I do have Valiki, some species tenebrosa seedlings. I did record a Patreon video for this one. I only got four seedlings. One of them is still remaining variegated. You're probably not going to be able to see that. I think this is something that commonly happens with this one. This one was also variegated, but the new leaf is green. I have only four seedlings and I think there were about 20 seeds. So unfortunately, not too many. I thought this verticillata is about to bloom, but I guess not. She does have a peduncle, but it's not growing. I do believe this is Verticillata. It is, it has an NS number. I don't know. You know what I should write? I should write the tags. Everyone needs their tags. And I know what each plant is. I can match them to the plants from my list. Anyways, that's one of the NS Verticillatas, I believe. And I remember the story. I think the first lady that bloomed that plant is Svetlana from France and she was good friends with Toral, Toral Nyhaus, and I think Toral said she had that plant for 20 years and it didn't bloom for her. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see if, if she will actually bloom for me. Hoyas getting a peduncle means nothing. <laughs> Trust me, it means nothing. Sometimes it can mean something, but in many cases it's just like, huh, they're trying to tease you. So I think that's it for this tent. Not too many things that need to be done here, except for overall maintenance, you know, watering, making sure that everyone is trellised, etc. But I'm not going to write that down. 
and you know just watching out for flowers. I think there might be more work in the other tent. That is an angle. That is certainly a choice. <laughs> So this is the bigger tent. You know, I forgot to write down that I need to do a Hoya count. I need to, that will be just additional chore. I need to know how many Hoyas I have at this point. I need to know where they are and what's happening. So let's make another list here. This is the larger tent and let's see what needs to be done here. Some plants are missing. I wonder where they are from there. What was there? I see an empty spot and I know that there was something for sure in it, but what? I don't know if we're gonna have all this time, but I would essentially like to repot all of my caudatas to an organic mix. I do have other plants that I want to repot from pond, but again, I don't, oh, oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my God, UT033 has buds. I am so happy. I love that plant. It is so beautiful the leaves, the flowers, that is excellent. Add it to Hoya of the week. I didn't think, because it doesn't bloom so, wait, what is the other thing that's blooming? Oh, that's Glabra. I think I have good photos of Glabra. We don't need that, but oh my gosh, UT033. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so sorry, I am so insane. <laughs> Flower watch, that's going to open within a couple of days. So UT033, and that is adding to Hoya of the week. I love that I can show you that plant. I, I'm not gonna take it out. It's all the way back, like follow my finger, all the way there in that corner, and then a little bit behind. So <laughs> that ain't happening. I'm not taking that out for you right now. I do apologize. It's just gonna take me forever. I'm also sweating. Flower watch for that one, absolutely necessary. I do see another verticillata and I can show you this one. It is a little bit high dehydrated, not hydrated. None of them are super hydrated. Um, that is a verticillata from Alea Garden, I believe. Yeah, that one needs to be watered. It's not terrible. That is verticillata from Alea. And it has very interesting leaves. They are slightly uh, paler than they ought to be. Needs to be watered needs to be super watered, but we're getting to it, honey. We're getting to it. So I do need flower photos of that one. This is just the regular, it's traded as black margin. Super pretty verticillata, one of the keepers in my collection for sure. Um, very, very nice. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So we do have peduncles here. But those are not going to, or maybe they will, but I don't think they were, they're going to be ready this month. My axillus is about to flower, so I do need those. I want to bring that to Hoya of the week. I need more detailed photos of that. Repot, Scortechini, and then my Glabra, not my Glabra, the other unholy mess that is absolutely awful is Lambi, true Lambi. Lambi needs a repot. Retrellis. It's a plant that is, oh, she's growing again. Oh, shoot. She needed a trellis a long time ago. So I need to cut the vines that are unwell. I need to repot her, which I sort of well, needed to do last year, but I haven't. Um, yeah, she needs to be in a self-watering pot, I believe. I think she's okay. The root system, she doesn't make great root system. It's not huge. I don't see plenty of roots. I mean, I see a lot of roots, but not like crazy amount. And can you see her? She is pretty, like the leaves are nice, but I can't recommend this plant to anyone. It's so difficult. Even, I think Doug also said the same thing and it's a difficult plant to grow if the humidity is not right, or maybe this is just one of those clones. I understand that for some people it may not be difficult. Camilla told me that she doesn't think it's so difficult, but you know, Camilla grows her in a greenhouse. So <laughs> yeah, it's not difficult in, a, in my grow tent, but it was an absolute awful plant to grow in my room, hanging, so I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think this is an easy plant. I think she is quite difficult. So I do need to retrellis it, help it out a bit. 
I like it. It's not, I don't hate it anymore. I used to hate it really much. And she's a very thirsty plant as well. She did try to bloom once, but of course nothing came of it. I don't know, you know, there are not many compelling arguments as to why you should have this plant. She's not so easy to grow. She only blooms for several hours. She is beautiful. She has very, very nice leaves, but there are many other Hoyas that have, you know, big, beautiful leaves. So, I don't know, girl, you're gonna have to try a little bit harder if you want me to recommend you to people. We do need to repot the small plants here from Pawn. Oh, and Solaris is about to bloom. Where is my <laughs> tablet? Okay. So my Insularis is about to bloom. That's gonna also be part of the series. <laughs> Flower Watch, Hoya Joy in the back. And Amrita is going to bloom from Sweden. It's only been a month or so since I got it. And Occultata is blooming, Occultata red, but only with one flower and it's not yet red. So I'm not going to even bring it out. It's currently yellow. As the flower ages, it becomes red. So we're not going to show you that one. I did want to repot two plants here. One of them is Hoya Elephant and the other one is Hoya EPC 1015, which is a cross between Hoya Lambi and a Hoya, uh, another Hoya. I don't know. I don't think we will have so much time to repot that as well. Even now when I'm kind of looking at what I need to monitor for flowers and like when I take Hoya photos, flower photos, it can take up to an hour just for one plant to find the good angle, to find the good light, to set everything up, to and then to do the detailed photos. And I already have like eight, eight Hoyas for flower watch just in these two tents. I know I have some above. Um, so we're not going to be able to do so many repottings. And also they're just much more urgent cases for repotting in my cabinets so you know we just something that's not urgent can't be done now but yeah I mean I was also thinking as I was kind of preparing for this video I was like what if I do all my plant chores in the month of June what if I finish what will I I won't have anything to upload sometimes I think what if I finish all the plant chores <laughs> and I just rest but I don't think that's happening when you have like four or five hundred Hoyas <laughs> I don't think that is something that is happening. I think there's always work to be done. I don't need to see my Hoya. That's my mister going on. I got a mister for my terrarium. By the way, I need to build a whole entire terrarium. <laughs> and I'm thinking here, what if I'm done with all my plant chores? Like, girl, you're not realistic. We are going to check my Hoya Praetori, which I think is now La Sianza. It's just La Sianza now, if I remember well. Yes, that's about to bloom as well. So I absolutely need photos of that plant. I don't have any good photos of Hoya La Sianza. So let's just get on the floor with me. Get on the floor, babes. La Sianza, that plant almost died due to mites. And now she recovered. She's a bit um, bare on the bottom, but hey, it happens. Some of the Hoyas here also need retrellising, like this super wild Hoya Meliflua. I got this from my friend. She got it from Julie, Julie Kennedy. And uh, or I think, I don't know if Julie sent this to me through my friend, I can't remember. Or my friend just decided to share it with me. Some plants Julie did send to me through her. I don't know if this one was one of them. It's absolutely massive. If you're looking a massive Hoya, they're just gonna be massive. Meliflua, hello, girl is massive. I can't even take her out. I don't know if Julie bloomed this plant. I do hear that, or maybe I imagined this, maybe I imagined it. I don't think she's so easy to bloom. I think she needs to be like really warm and wants high humidity to bloom. I could be making all of this up. Let me just, she of course wrapped around something that she's not supposed to wrap around. And I tried to keep her tame, but I just think we need to retrellis her. She's beyond massive. Like you're not gonna think that when you see her, but she really is big girl. I mean, those leaves are absolutely huge. I don't know if you can tell, but they're like 20 centimeters. I mean, this one is like ridiculous. What is happening? Something is cracking. 
absolutely massive. She has been, I just made a mess out of trellising this. I think she's way too tightly trellised. I think I will get her on a different trellis this month, maybe, if there is time, but I'm not gonna write it down as it's not really a top priority. Yeah, she just needs a much bigger trellis. She's a very, very aggressive and fast grower. She did stop there for a moment because it didn't wa water her enough. And shockingly, I thought that this one was gonna make a bigger root system, but it's really not so big. Um, she barely comes out of the spot. So, and I keep her quite dry too. But yeah, she just didn't grow much. Maybe she didn't grow throughout the winter because it was really, it was like 20 degrees of Celsius in the tent, which isn't very warm, 21 maybe. Uh, and she really is a warm grower. But I do not detect any peduncles, no pedunkies, nothing. I also don't really love the flowers. I saw photos and I'm like, not really sure that I actually want to see them. I am, though, very impressed by the leaves. They're just very beautiful and I really like it. For the leaves, I almost hit my nose there. I wanted to show you a couple of plants here that I find uber sexy. I was talking about Hoya Lambi and I wanted to show you that cross that I have, EPC 1015. Also have fallen buds here from Hoya Amrita Frogfoot. That one is in bloom. I think I want to repot that one. This needs to be also repotted. Let's write that down. My yellow occultata. This one also will be in Hoya over the week. I actually do need better photos of that. Okay, it's becoming quite clear to me that I won't have so much time. I think I do want to repot this one as well to a slightly different mix. This is Amrita, Frogfoot, and then the other one from Sweden is about to bloom. The Shemar one. Would we focus? Would we not focus? But the leaves are different. Yes, I keep forgetting why I came down here. <laughs> I start doing something and I just get distracted. So the first one that I want to show you is so sexy. Oh, she's about to bloom too. I need flower photos of that. <gasps> oh, so thank you so much. This is Hoya Elephant. Elephant. I think it's obviously clear why she's an elephant. She has huge, huge leaves. This does need to be watered, number one. Number two, she needs to be repotted. She has, oh, peduncles on both, on two vines. She needs to be repotted as well to an organic mix. I think she will be much happier in that. Um, that leaf is absolutely huge. It's also very cupped. Don't know if you can see, but it's such a nice leaf that makes me, I don't know, I just wanna do that. It's so pillowy, it's incredible. If you don't have Hoya Elephant, you absolutely need it. I hated this plant, by the way, because it's uh, not a good grower for me. It doesn't grow fast. Sometimes it will give you a weird leaf. And this is something that's very consistent. Betsy also has the same issue where they will grow like this very weirdly and sometimes they will start to be yellow here and fall off, which is very annoying. And oftentimes it's circulated that Hoya elephant is a sister seedling to Hoya prik type, but that's actually not true. There's no way for us to confirm that. They do come from the same nursery elephant and prik type from Pacharawalai, but um, there, there's no confirmation that they are both from the same seed pot. I don't know how that got into circulation, that rumor, but it's not true. I kind of went back and checked it and there's no confirming. confirming. I do have a Prikti now to show you. And I think the reason why people said it's maybe from the same seed pot is because the flowers do resemble, but that doesn't mean anything. It could be from two different seed pots on the same plant um, or on like, maybe it's the same type of a cross two plants crossed together, but like two different plants. Brigtai is also though annoying for me, so needs to be repotted as well. Now it is in my southeast facing window and she did burn a bit. She did burn, well, not really burn, but she got bleached a bit, but look at her, look at her. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Very, very pretty. 
very pretty plant you can see here. Where is it? Bleached a bit, but not actually crispy burned. Very pretty leaves. Good grower when she wants to be. Absolutely terrible when she wants to be as well. So, <laughs> moody can relate. The other one that I wanted to show you, that one is also burned. My gosh, so many burned ones. This is the cross of um, Lambi and, 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 will it say on the tag? Of course it's not. It's a Lambi with something. This burned when it was on the top, so I moved it to the bottom of my tent. I think this pot is too big for it. I think the reason, first of all, the reason why this is in this pot is because of pond, and it did require a larger pot, but now I think I will change it to organic mix. Very pretty big leaves as well. Obviously quite plain compared to Hoya elephant. I mean, look at this one. Mm, I love it. But I do understand that you will find these plain. There is some charm to it in real life, but if you had to pick elephant in this, you would definitely pick elephant, I believe. And it's starting to grow better, so maybe I will leave it in pawn. We actually have three growth points. Thank you very much. Where do you think you're going? Four growth points, okay. <laughs> Where though? We don't have space, girly. Rusia needs a repot. Oh, that actually absolutely needs a repot, so. I will write that. My hippolasia is not growing, Julie, if you're listening. And that's because I'm trying to grow her as a hanging plant. And guess what? She don't like it. She says, absolutely not. I do need a trellis to define. I do need to restart my Juan Michele. This is absolutely not fitting. But what did I do? Honestly, what the heck did I do? Suddenly there's no space. We are going to close them and move on. I can't record the tent on top, but I will just do that without you. I will write down what I need to do. I wanted to do one more section in this video, but I don't think I'm actually going to have time. I wanted to make hanging planters for my epicias, which you still need to get a whole video of. They're next to the tent. I'm going to show you what that looks like, but we don't have time to make any hangers. I'm going to show you though what I did make, so we just need to make more. I forgot one more thing here. I'm gonna bring you in closer. I forgot to mention this, but this is not very useful to me anymore, this shelf here. So I think I'm going to take the top part off, especially because Paradisa is climbing there. We don't want that. And then I can get a bit more real estate for some low light plants there. But that's not very useful for me. I used to have plants there too in two levels, but I don't have so many small plants that can go there, and I don't think there is a tremendous amount of light, so I think I'm gonna take it down, but I could also be wrong, so we'll see. But I can't really put any more plants in here. I can put some plants there, and I think something is missing there. I just need to remember what exactly, but on the bottom, I do want to um, make sure that I can still enter the tent, so I'm going to leave it as is. The bottom needs to, needs to stay slightly open so I can kind of also walk in and water uh, the tent. So I'm not going to put any more plants there. Maybe there in the corner, one more plant can fit. Don't know if you can actually see the corner. Right there. Where's my finger? Where's my finger? Right there, something could potentially fit. Um, but that's about it. That's about it. So, this is one of the most challenging angles to record here for me because the light is shining from here, from there, from everywhere. There is so much light! Yet I think I need more lights. <laughs> Yet I think I need more. But here, do we even see? These are where Episcias are. When you walk outside, you can see that tent from the street. There is a window here that also has needs to be cleaned. My windows needs to be washed this month. You can sort of see this wall and I just wanted something to cover it a little bit better. And I decided to buy some Episcias because I do think they look very cute. You will see a haul. I'm just going to show you one that is blooming. It's called Kiwi. She is the cutest. My goodness. There is also... Okay, I'm going to show you one more but Honestly, for the rest of them, you gotta watch the haul, or you don't have to, but like you should, because you love me. They need to be repotted. They're gonna go into these pots. I already have the pots, but 
I just figured out a different way to hang them. I'm gonna hang them on these. You have seen these in the past in my collection and I, they have only three holes. So this is a bit interesting design, the way that I did this, but whatever. They have three holes, so I can't do four ropes. So I sort of decided to do this. And this is like with only one rope strand. So that's why you can see it kind of go in and then through that out, whatever. So I need to make <laughs> seven more of these. And then these black pots are gonna go into these. This is gonna serve as cover pots. And I think it's gonna look very cute. But this is the, this is Dominica. This is a Ukraine, Ukraine hybrid. <laughs> Can't talk. That is absolutely adorable. Those leaves. My friend thinks they're ugly. You have seen Diana. She thinks they're absolutely repulsive. <laughs> I, think. I think, but she also thinks that for begonias. So, you know, some people just don't like leaves like that. So I think she's very cute, but I do need to make about eight more of these. And I do have them drilled. In my cabinet, everything needs to be trellised here, and some of them need to be repotted. Those are very urgent, so they're gonna go on my list. Here needs to be emptied. I have two prop boxes here. I have my seedlings. I need to find a home in my collection for my La Galata seedlings. They're doing well. We cannot see them. I don't know how camera works. There you go. So they need to find a home in my collection. They're doing well. This one is going to bloom finally, my Hoya Gri 50, which I really hope does not have mealy bugs because I can't, I really cannot handle it anymore. I've been spraying entire month of May and still, but the trellis needs to be extended and it doesn't have mealy bugs, but it does have a lot of white dots on it, which is me damaging the leaves constantly. It is about to bloom for the first time. She did try to bloom before, but I did not take proper care of her back then. So, I mean, I think I either underwatered or whatever, but you can see she's more than big enough. She really wanted to bloom early on for me. And now it's been two years, I think, since I've had it. Yeah, two years, exactly. So she should have bloomed within a year, under a year, but she didn't. My Hoya Mathilde bloomed also this month. I need to take photos of Hoya Mathilde. She also took a moment. She is not really loving being in the pond here because this is not a self-watering pot and I do think she's a bit drier than she should be. I don't think I'm certain. She doesn't smell that bad to me, but it's not pleasant either. It is pea mixed with, um, a different type of a scent. But she needs to be repotted. She's together in the pot with Shuke. I'm going to just move them out from Pawn. And I should do that this month, really, I should. I don't water nearly enough to have anything outside of the tents hanging in Pawn, in a non-self-watering pot. Am I insane? <laughs> I think I'm gonna redo this shelf, if you cannot see that. How do I even show you? Yeah, I think I'm gonna rework this a bit, put another Ikea, one of these there for the begonias. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I do have some Hoyas, some Hoyas were here, but they got mealybugs, so I'm not gonna put them back. I don't know, I might move some of these in the clochets here. I'm not really sure. But I think here on the top, I need to lighten this. It's too many Hoyas. I think something that sort of looks like this, so I have a can stay, it's sort of fall, but these that go up, really bother me. One of these, I think it's either Finley Sony or Nui, or both of them, they bloom consistently, constantly. The flowers fall here on my desk, on the floor, it's really bothering me, so I think I need to fix that. I also have this Finley Sony for my friend. I have a double peduncle here. Look how, look at that. The light isn't the best, is it? It's too much, too much. I need to see what I'm gonna do with all of these. Finley Sony, Affinity Finley Sony, I cannot grow them anymore. It's way too many. And I need to fix my hanging hoys. They're outside now and they burned very quickly. Within a couple of days, they burned outside. So that's unfortunate. I think I'm going to restart them. So the top of my Ratsta, the top of my Ratsta, the top of my Ratsta, I need to move that 
it cannot stay there. That Hua Carno Sargentia was supposed to be repotted ages ago and cut because it keeps reverting. I need to make this not look so messy. It's overcrowded, it's way too messy. I need to move them around a bit, these Hoyas. I have fungi, um, Tamda, which might be fungi, Desiantha, uh, species Vietnam, which is similar to Carnosa, Caudata big leaf. I might get rid of that. Carnosa, 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 Carnosa. <laughs> A lot of Carnosa cultivars. I can't help it. They're pretty. They're pretty. I like them. But they need to be spread out across this. And I essentially think what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a light here. Just a bar. This light above is not enough. My hanging hoes were there. I'm sorry. Now this Marantha is here. She needs to be watered. But yeah, that light is just not reaching this. And this is a northwest facing window. So not much light is reaching these. So I think I will just put one more LED bar here. Now it's not so bad because all the hanging coils are out, but I miss stuff hanging here. It was really nice. It kind of separates the space like a nook, even though they're up and there's like no separation. Um, so I do miss these. I'm going to restart or whatever I'm gonna do. I'm going to return stuff hanging here or I might hang some orchids. I do have orchids that I thought about hanging and that might not be a bad idea um, to have this, sorry, it's very dusty, to have like a cascading Phalaenopsis flowers there. That's also kind of cute. Oh, there's so much dust. Depends on the, on the state of my hanging hoys. It's not really looking good. And I do have more space in the window that I can return those, but like several of them are really in a pathetic state. They burned again within days. Even though they were in shade, just the conditions outside are brutal. And I kept moving them, but yeah, it didn't help. And these need to be retrellised. I'm making a retrellising video, trellising slash retrellising video, some tips that I learned, and that's I think gonna be out next week. So we are going to take a look in some of these that have outgrown their trellises, but a lot of them look pretty nice. I also don't know, what do I do with micro dwarf? Do I just, it's looking pretty. Maybe I hang this one. Maybe I hang it, I don't know. It's pretty, but it's not going to bloom. She hasn't bloomed for anyone. So yeah, it's looking good, but I think I need to, I don't know. I also like to see her like that. If she could stay like that here, can we do that? <laughs> that would be kind of cute. What bothers me about putting a light there is I'm going to have like an LED bar here and it goes a bit into the wall and it kind of is a, obstacle between then the orchid wall, tiny orchid wall here that I have. So that does not make me super happy at all, but I do think these needed because my fungi hasn't bloomed in over a year and I think it needs to have um, additional light, essentially. There is quite a lot of things that need to be done. Daily monitoring of the mealybugs, daily monitoring. I don't know where to finish this video. Let's go, should we go to the the ground. I don't know. This is not the best angle, but a lot of work needs to be done. I'm sort of looking now to not have anything on the floor here. I used to have a lot of prop boxes here on the floor and everywhere. I'm utilizing the grow tent right now quite a lot, the one in the, in the storage space, because I don't want prop boxes here, essentially. But I'm sort of looking by the end of summer to have everything cleaned, sprayed, to handle the mealybugs, to, I don't know, to just make it look a bit nicer. It's not that it's not nice, but a lot of plants have overgrown, some have suffered a bit. Some on the wall, I have a couple of them that are not doing the best. I don't know why. I checked the roots, the roots seem fine, but they constantly look dehydrated. They don't have root mealybugs. I think I'm not watering some of them enough in the cocoa husk. But another issue is if I water them too much, the cocoa husk starts to drip from the wall or the water. Most of them are loving it, but some of them definitely need to be watered more. So I think when they grow in a bit more in the cocoa husk, it will be better. But I need to monitor that wall. I found mealybugs there and they sort of transfer to that Argentia princess. And that's where I found them today. But yeah, essentially my summer is gonna be treating the mealybugs for, I don't know, how long I 
can't believe I have them. I, ha I didn't have them for years. For years I didn't have them and they found their way back in. I found them at this point almost everywhere. Not too many. It's like one or two, but I know if I let it go, if I don't treat it, it will get out of control. So it's very frustrating to see even one or two plants because I sprayed down the wall. I took everything outside. I sprayed them and I still see them pop up. It's very annoying. I saw in the big tent, in the small tent, um, in the small tent, I haven't seen anything for months. In the big tent, I saw, we, last month I saw a mealybug, <laughs> a mealybug, and then I took everything out and sprayed it because you have to be very proactive. You have to stay on top of it because if you just remove one and don't spray the plants or shower them at least or something, they are going to pop up on multiple places. So yeah, it's just very annoying because they spread relatively fast. I will just forever say this. If you think mealybugs are easy to get rid of, you have not had a serious infestation. You don't know what you're talking about. So good for you, good for you. I actually envy you. Anyway, I am going to leave you here. I also need to kind of write down what I need to order. I want to order a couple of things from Ikea. I might make a video on that, or maybe it will be like some sort of a vlog. I wanted to do a dedicated video again for some Ikea stuff that I want to order, but I don't think there's enough. Essentially a couple of plant stands that they have and they're very affordable. So I wanted to order them for my Lockies and for this Araucaria, which also needs to be repotted. If you have any tips for a potting mix for Arau Araucaria, let me know. Because I have like cocoa peat and perlite. I have cocoa husk, bark, moss, pumice, but I don't think any of those will work. I think what Araucaria wants is a, a more of a peaty mix um, and probably something with a lower pH. Just my guess. But if you have any tips, let me know. She has to stay in organic. I'm not moving her to anything. And I do think she's in peat. She needs to be watered a bit. A lot of my aeroids need to be repotted, so there will be an aeroid repot. I also need to order a lot of potting supplies, bark, moss, pumice, I need to order a lot of that. I've been avoiding it for months and now it's really like, we are nearing the end of everything. I have ordered local bark, well not local, but like from Serbia and I had to bake it because sometimes it has fungus gnats. I need to order bark from Equigenera because that one is very good quality. So I've been sort of like postponing that. I don't really know why. I just was like, I don't want to make, I don't want to spend a lot of money. But now we've come to a point where I've used up the pumice. We can't get that here in service. I have to order that from Equigenera and Moss. <laughs> so now instead of spending like 30 euros on just bark, I have to spend like 100 to get pumice, bark, moss. <laughs> and I need to order the lights for this, for the future terrarium. You can kind of see a sneak preview of the plants. I'm going to make a video about all the plants that I got for the terrarium. This is the mister. You can see him. Um, we have had some issues with the mister. I will make a video on the terrarium, but I do want to plan this out really well. Currently, it's not weather stripped, but they're doing well, it seems. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know that it was all over the place and it's because it's sort of all over the place and trying to make sense of everything that you need to do is not easy, especially when so many things need to be done at all times. But I would like you to tell me what are your plans? How do you approach your month? And it doesn't have to be just plant work because this is sort of my job, not sort of, it actually is your job, Miro, if you haven't been informed. But <laughs> how do you approach your month? Uh, what do you do? How do you plan it out? Let me know. I will see you in the next video, which is going to be a bit more useful. This was just sort of, sort of chatty and walking through my collection. Hello, this is Editing Miro, and I just wanted to come in and say hi. My camera did stop recording because that was five hours of footage. Ha ha ha. Anyways, I wanted to hop on and wish you a happy weekend. I hope your Sunday was great and to just say I will see you in the next video and I promise they will be shorter. I know this one, this was a massive one. I do apologize, but you know, it is what it is. Have a wonderful weekend and see you next time.
I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, and Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Betsy Bougie Panda, Brett Noble, Candy Tap, Catherine Molina, Christy Claire Cola, Daniela, Danum Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dili Heredia, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Ethan W, Erin Keenan, Ellen Saxon, Ellen, and Mortal, Farah, Gathering Moss, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chir, Yavin Denot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cook, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kimberly Polka, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan the Staff, Lisa Mary MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Maria Stein, Maria Yarmulich, Maria West, Mara P, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun, Ruth, Moa Edmund, Nelian, Niha Basu, Nicole Maroney, Nanin Quinn, Nita Macy, BJ Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martin, Stia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Walmut, Zaira Rivera, and Zlalko Pipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, Kilon Constance, Daryl De Rosario, Deborah Violet, Eden C., Catherine Parsons, Kenz Brown, Elle Lindbergh, Lindsay Ann, Mary H., Nella, Sykes Zara, Renee Church, Ringlob, Sophia Ryan, Tang Watanas Riakul, and Wendy Foreman. And a thank you to my $1 patrons. One anonymous patron, Alice Morland, Brandon Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle, Vibe Couture Helvetica, Amelia Bronson, Jolie Sullivan, Jonas Berkhart Larson, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lauren N, Subramaniam, Luzmin Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Nerdy Cathy, Olivia Chun Muller, and Tracy B. Eibler.